Giving the lovely Hazel a lift up back to her place, she invited me in. And before Barry showed up, she told me the whole situation. What do you mean, poor bloody Barry got back and found you two ensconced? <laughs> he wouldn't have the weddings off. Bollocks, I was. I wouldn't jump a mate's bird, not at three in the afternoon. This is work for him, it wasn't up after it. <laughs> <laughs> she needed someone to confide in, all right? She thought I was his best mate or something. So what you said? Needed time to think. Was it for the right reasons? Reevaluate the relationship? Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, point is, she's got cold feet. Well, if you know that, you must have had your leg over. All right, end of story, end. I shouldn't have mentioned it, should I? Funny, though. Whenever us lot get together, it spells trouble for someone. Right. So what we're doing back together? Because we're misfits, Mum. What? What? Why, drifters? Drifters on the highway of life. There's no lag I'd make the I don't see it that way myself. No, no we're, we're drifters, yeah. But that's because we're free spirits. Rebelling against a system that wants to grind us down. I think comradeship's got a lot to do with it. Counts for me, anyway. That's why I'm here. Not just to help out Barry, but to be with you lot. Even you, Oz. Well, thank you. Could to get a donut. Strange lad, that lad. Do you know, in all the time I've known Moxie, I think that's the longest speech I've ever heard him make. Yeah. Well, if he was that clean to see us again, his life must be pretty bloody desperate, mustn't it? No? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Moxie's right. We're free spirits, embarking on a great new adventure. We're the Magnificent Seven, and Dennis is your brinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got about the same amount of hair. Oh, <laughs> very funny, very funny, aye. Right? Look, man, we're not off to repel marauding Mexicans, you know. We're only getting back to laying bricks for a couple of months. Oh, aye. Might as well be in Mexico. Oh, mate, we're bloody Derbyshire. Eh? It's in the middle of nowhere, isn't it? I'll be Erst back out, because like, he was the youngest and best looking, wasn't he? Well, oh, he was also the most boring bastard, all wasn't right, he? All right. He was the one that was always tagging along, the other six cups having to turn the piss off. Oh, I think Barry should be Yule Brinner, because he's the one that brought us together. Oh, aye. <clears throat> Can't see that somehow. He's not a natural leader, is Barry. Aye. James Coburn, me. Because he was. Cool and laconic, wasn't he? Well, since the situation's vacant, I'll be Steve McQueen. Oh, no, hold on, I forgot about him. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh you lady. piss off, you oh. chose the crowd, so you're stuck with him. Yeah, well, who's that leave me? Charles Bronson, isn't it? Ah? No, no, man, there was this big fella, man, was one of them. Nobody could ever remember his name. Yeah. Oh, I, I, he's... I can see his face on the Oh, am I, you kill it? He's... I can see him. Ah, uh, well, just uh... let me know my name if ever you remember it. So that leaves Bronson and Robert Vaughan for Barry and Moxie. Robert Vaughan. He's the one that lost his bottle but redeemed himself at the finish, wasn't he? Aye, ah, Bronson. Bronson was the enigmatic one, wasn't he? Deadly link. 
Agreed then? Yeah. Brunson. Yeah. Your Charles, Charles Brunson, Moxie. What? <laughs> Why? Doesn't he bugger in Father Mutman? Photographs didn't do this place justice. It's even bigger than I imagined. Yeah. You know, Ali, I've always thought that Victorian architecture was a gesture of their confidence rather than their taste. Oh, well. Think about it, Malcolm. A hundred years ago or so, there'd be one family living in this place. Coal owners, probably. Picture it. There's a thousand wretches slaving away underground for a hundred hours a week for a bowl of dripping, and he's up here supping claret and playing billiards after dinner. <laughs> Those were the days, eh, son? In point of fact, I think most of the industry round here was steel. Yeah. Times change. Most of Kenny Ames' money came from pornography. Did he ever actually live in the house? Well, I think he spent a few weekends here. Before the fraud squad caused his hasty departure to Malaga. The fraud squad's my main concern, Ali. Any transaction involving his property is going to show straight up on the computer. So, they can't freeze his assets. Thanks to a great British judicial system, a man is innocent until proven guilty. But Kenny Ames will be innocent until the day he dies, provided he dies in Spain. It draws attention to you. I mean, they're not going to fail to notice that the sale price is way below market value. That's fraud, Ali. You're avoiding capital gains tax to say nothing of stamp duty. Look, my survey report will show that this building is riven with dry rot, rising damp, woodworm, probably, possibly even death watch beetle. He's very lucky I'm taking it off his hands. You haven't had a survey. I haven't even had time to conduct the normal searches. Well, my survey report will show exactly what I wanted to show, my friend. I guarantee that. Mr. Fraser? Clarkson, representing Mr. Ames. Hallwood, representing Mr. Fraser. How do you do? How do you do? This reminds me very much of my gap in Tilbury. Not so much gardens, mind you, on the other end. Don't suppose they had the pong from the lino factory, eh? I lived in a place like this once. Bollocks! I did. The Borsal near Prestatin. What's all he found to do with this, Dan? Tame sharing units, I call them. Old salt containerly. Ah, so we'll put lots of bathrooms in, you know, kitchenettes. It's a lot of work. 
Oh, it's a stack of overtime, eh? Because he wants a job done first. So I wouldn't reckon on uh, Senor Brenner too often, mate. Fine by me. Oh, hey, don't tell me you're heading for the Broken Homes Club as well, are you? Oh, of course not. Yeah. I'll just be glad to get my head down and get some solid grafting. What you learn, son? <laughs> What's the draw then, Dennis? We're supposed to wait around till he shows up. Or we could murder a pint. We passed a nice little pub in the village. Aye, well, you lads go down there. I'll have to stop here, man. Well, there's and mocks. Water in the geraniums, I suppose. <laughs> hey, Oz! Mox! Come on, we're going down to Boozer. Bummer. Don't let the lads make a dear trip of this main, no way. Eh? Leave it to me, Dennis. I'll keep them in order. Pint and a pie. Good. Don't listen. I thought you said this place was empty. Cheers, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, apart from the monster. Didn't want to let you know about that in case it frightened your flake, you know. What are you peasants doing on my property? There's notice that what clearly states that members of the working class will be exterminated. Now, piss off! <laughs> Sergeant Ives? Oh, good morning, Mrs. Bellamy. How are you? Hmm? Oh, very well, thank you. I was taking Jasper for his morning walk past Thornley Manor, and I saw some men there. Oh? Well, there's probably a perfectly innocent explanation. But they did look awfully rough. Is this it, Wayne? No. No, no, the one I saw was further down the road. Looks quite nice. Nah, I hate places like that. You've never even been in one of us? You're doing up the gun into now what they're gonna be like, man. Full of bloody horse brasses and punters in suede coats, slurping gin and tonics, talking about bloody gym corners. Yeah, he's right. There'll never be a dart boat there. Hey, excuse me, dear. What's your name, by the way? Fiona. Fiona. Well, I need a little more horseradish, Fiona, and uh, we'll have another one of those at the same time. Right. Yeah. Very good food. Yeah, I found this place in Egon Roney. Happily, it's quite near the house. Yeah, well, as much as I like the place and as much as I fancy our wee friend Fiona here, I'm not over-anxious to extend my stay. After all, I'm officially supposed to be on a golfing holiday in Marbella. We've cut all the corners. I know Mr. Hallwood still has a few question marks. Oh, I had a still a wee bit of ping-pong to do in the deal, but that's for you two legal eagles to sort out. Just you let me know when I can have the keys and I can send my boys in, and by the time you've had your creme caramel, you'll have my cheque in your pocket. The wine's just coming, sir, and there's the horseradish. Lovely. Thank you, Fiona. That's a Scottish name, isn't it? There we are, thank you, God. Thank you. Hey! How often you get these records changed, lad? Nothing to do with me. That's up to the brewery. <gasps> well, a brook from a brewery must love Duran Duran. You haven't got one decent record on here, man. Same again, is it? No, no. I promised then I'd get you all back. Ah, it'll work. Just going for a piss. I better get Dan something to eat, eh? Oh, yeah. Got any of them pies left, Squire? No, you had the last. Have you got any scotch eggs? No. You got anything hot? It's after two. Oh, look, we've got this mate and he's not eaten, so uh, what can you offer? Crisps or that sandwich. We'll take that then. 
don't think we'll be coming back here in a hurry, do you? He has no part. Can he drop? No, I'm not talking about the beer, man. I'm talking about main host, uh, Happy Harry the Winko. Are you referring to me? Well, it obviously acts all the F, aren't you? Yeah? I mean, judging by all the crap you got hanging up on the walls, anyway. When did you get pensioned up, then? I resigned six years ago. Oh, six years ago. Eh? Well, that'll be the nice, easy stretch, was it? Oh, what do you mean, easy? Between sewers and the Falklands, there wasn't a lot of action, was there, eh? About as much as we'll find around here. I trust you'll go and find it somewhere else. Car wing. Up. Stop! I gotta get out! It's just bean mocks. Uh, there's a couple of people in the village taking lodges. I expect we'll manage. I'm coming. Here. Yeah. You shouldn't have gone all that man. These are your lads, eh, Mr. Patterson? Aye, Sergeant Ives, that's Bomber, Oz, Wayne, never. Where's Moxie? In the middle, please. Yeah, where's he, man? He's, um, uh... He's, he's jogging, Dennis. Aye. Yeah, you know what a fitness fanatic he is. Aye. Uh, what we've done wrong, anyway, Sergeant? Eh? Huh? Only been in your locality for about ten minutes. It's just a misunderstanding, lads. I'm off for me dinner. Maybe see you later for a jar sometime, eh, Dennis? Aye, cheers. Hey, what's going on, man? Where's Moxie? As soon as he's seen the lawn, he's off like a rat at the drill. Yeah, it's conditioned reflex, isn't it? You know how to check a past it's got. Yeah, it's a bit odd, though. Aye. Aye, it's not the way Charles Bronson would have performed, is it? Maybe we should have given him Robert Vaughan. Just checking up, like, you know. Ah. Uh, you know Malcolm Holborn? No. Hello there. Yeah. Dennis, who'll be in charge of the operation? Sure. Uh. Looks like you got your work cut out there. Well, I've got the right lads for it, like, you know. Yeah. Look more like a bunch of mercenaries. So? How long do you reckon, Dennis? Oh, there's a chance, Ali, man. I've only just seen the plans. Need to see the architect, won't I? No, 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 no. These were drawn up for the previous owner. My man will be down tonight. It's, uh, Howard Brantcliffe. Do you know him? Yeah, I can't see a do been out the trade for a while, have not? Oh, well, it'll come back. So, how long? Well, that all depends, doesn't it? Whether you want the job done to first-class specifications, or you're doing a Mickey Mouse job where we'll paint over the cracks for a quick profit. Yeah, nothing wrong with Mickey Mouse. Never did Walt Disney any harm. Right, now, come over the cross keys, 10 o'clock tonight. Save time in the morning. Well, hey, hey, hey. Don't think you're rushing off in the morning, you know. I mean, you've got to go into town, open a bank account. I mean, I've got to be made signatory on the checkbook so I can get credit with the trade. Yes, well, we'll take like it back to Spain. Kenny Ames will be running about with Vicky and one of his porno movies. He's flashing that massive never looks right, left and centre. Come on, move it. This place looks oh, all right. I this place is a good idea. We've been all over the place, Manos. Well, I thought that Mrs. Armitage seemed nice enough. Oh, no, oh, no, man. Oh, you know what that's going to be, didn't you? Wipe your feet before you come in and lights out after ten. Of course, we're always going to steal with Ali at the cross keys at fifty pound a night, like. Well, if we don't find somewhere soon, we're going to end up kipping down at the house. What, eh? Well, don't fancy that. Look, man, it's only for one night, man. We'll find somewhere permanent. Some of us are starving because some of us didn't get any dinner. All right, all right. Suit yourselves. Right, let's go, now. What's the matter? 
Well, you're best at this sort of thing. Ah. Then, uh, yeah, you handle it. Ah. Is your large now something I don't? Ah. Oh. Evening. Uh, have you got any rooms free? You might have. Uh, you could manage three twins, could you? How many nights? At least a couple. Yes, I think I can manage that. Jummy. Great lads, no problem. Well, there'll be 18 pounds a night, and I don't take credit cards. It's OK. We'll prefer cash anyway. Uh, tell you what, give us um, five pence for this bit. Let us start with, please. Hello again. <laughs> I got you got there then. Yeah. It's quite nice here, actually. Very rural like. Anyway, how things were you? Oh, I'll cast, perhaps, yeah. I'm doing me vats. Dodge a bloody bomb, you does. No, I, I mean, were you and Hazel? Oh, well, it's, it's very difficult to say, Neville, really. She's acting very peculiar, if you ask me. I, I told her so. I said you're acting very peculiar, Hazel. Still, I'm. I'm not going to do anything precipitous. I mean, it's not as if she's, you know, seen anybody else or, or anybody else about life. I mean, I can understand if it was like, but uh, no, I think it's all in her head, actually, Nev, yeah. Ah, oh, she'll come round, yeah. It's just a matter of waiting her out. I think. Oh, I'm at too early. Oh, no, 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 Dad, that's good. Um, put up a chair. You fancy a brandy or something? Yeah, I wouldn't say no, aye, thanks. Uh, Fiona, darling, another brandy up here, sweetheart. This is Howard Radcliffe, Dennis. How do you do, Dennis? Your lads settling in all right, are they? Aye, aye, we've found a place up the road. It's not as cosy as this lake, you know, but it'll do. <laughs> you fancy something off the sweet trolley? I recommend the chocolate mousse. Yeah, I wouldn't mind some cheese and crackers. Wherever you like. Uh, Fiona, darling. I'll have the cheese board, please, love. Well, Dennis, we're basically keeping to the original plans with a few simplifications. Cut and corners, you mean? Oh, Dennis, Dennis, your attitude is becoming increasingly cynical. I've got a major investment to protect here, and I'm concerned with economies. And these are hard times. Oh, yeah, I can see that, I. You want to Chris, I know. You want a pot of Chris? Yeah, right. You want a pot of Chris, though? I can't get any food. Aye, oh, salt and vinegar. Oh. You've got any. Right, well, we're going to need them. Yeah. What's this? Oh, I'll put that on, sure. I'll get bloody do. It's colder than the end of the route, sir. Right, right, lads. This is where I want to make a start, right? Now, then, no matter what the architect decides, the goods have got to come out all these rooms, right? Now, this wall here, a whole wall's got to come down. I want all these old fireplaces ripped out. OK, we're going to put a new wall in there, so we're going to have two new kitchens in here, OK? Hello. Right, I've got to go into town, meet Ali. So we'll make a start, all right? Yep. All right, hello, Absolutely. Hey, man, we got any juice, right? Mox. Oh, lads, where the hell are you been? I thought it down there last night. You look frozen. Here, lad. So, what's the word then, eh? I mean, I think you owe us an explanation, mate. Yeah. Uh, 
I've been in prison, see? Oh, nah, that man, but that was yonks ago, wasn't it? No. Does it mean you're gonna shit yourself every time you say a buzz? No, I, I mean, I've been in recently. Like last week. I'm not too out till next March. What? You mean you went over the wall? Well, it wasn't a closed neck. I was in an open prison in Cheshire. It wasn't as if I had to dig a tunnel or rent an helicopter. I just walked out the front door. Bought a tobler on at the post office and got a bus to Macclesfield. Why? I got a mate there. He give us a float and I made me way to Barry's. You must be mad, Mox. Yeah, it's a bloody lunatic thing to do, Mox. If he was in open prison, he must have been dealt with fairly lenient. Oh, I was. Not a great A villain. Just got done for the old trouble. Well, arson. Yeah. You see, with me, they know that it's a psychological defect as opposed to a criminal tendency. Oh, they also didn't want a prison burn to the group, did they? Yeah, but finally, Mux, if it was an open prison, you must have had life pretty cushy, eh? It's still stair, Wayne. It's still people telling you what to do and when to do it. I had a year of it ahead of me. You will have a bloody sight more when they nick you, mate. Yeah, Wayne's right. You give yourself up and you'll be cane for your little walkabout. If you don't and you get collared, you'll be looking at two years. Yeah. I'll take my chances. Suit yourself. Yeah. Ah, the money box you will look at it. Good golden. Maybe we would like to fire, eh? Yeah, that's a good idea, then. Uh, no, nah, no, nah, not you, Moxie. I think I'll do it. Turn up, lads. Oh, oh yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Full mirrors. Sure. Cheers. Oh, cheers, mate. Mm. Want to tie us? Jesus. I tell you what, I think we should put Moxie back on the old T duty, don't you? Yeah, go, son. Yes, sir. Oh, this is the in the kitchen. Morning. Oh, hello. I'm Helen Bellamy. I owe you gentlemen an apology. It was I who sent the policeman here yesterday. I'm afraid I thought you were criminals. <laughs> well, it did look a bit out of place, they weren't here. Mr. Ames uh, talked about doing some work on the house. Oh, it's not Mr. Ames we're working for. This is owned by Mr. Fraser now. Oh, it's been sold. I never saw any signs. None of the local estate agents had it listed. Of course, Mr. Ames was rather a mystery man. My husband and I met him once when we were raising money for Oxfam. He made a very generous donation. And then one day, we opened the Sunday newspapers and found him described as King Pawn. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yes, is, is this Britain's most evil man, one of them asked. We'd always found him perfectly charming. Ah, well, you can't go and judge in a book by what you see printed on the front cover, Pat, can you? I beg your pardon? He's saying appearances can be deceptive. Right. Yeah, you see, these days a lot of villains become country squires, don't they? You know, mingle with the local knobs, take up fox hunting, have sherry with a vicar. Then once a month, they pops down to London, does the old bullying job. Oh, and then they get rumbled, you see. They dodge out to Spain, don't they? Ah, oh, Spain? Ah. Yes, where one gathers, Mr. Ames now resides. Uh, would you like a cup of tea, Mrs? No, thank you. Jasper and I must be getting along. Nice dog, Pa. I like retrievers. <laughs> I would have thought a retriever would be the last sort of dog you would have fancied, Muxy. <laughs> Shut up, Oz. The old house can do with a lick of paint. Oh, it's more than that, pet. Big job, this. Conversion. Really? I will be here, Wayne. Aye, so you better look up your daughters. <laughs> well, gentlemen, your rooms are ready. You can go whenever you like. I think we'd rather have another half, wouldn't we, Barry? Oh, oh, yeah. Nice job, that. I don't suppose you get many visitors this time of year? No, not until the holidays, no. Well, actually, as it happens, this week I'm quite full. You did. Know? Yeah, Lord Scotch, please, Arthur. In a moment. Got colder, has it? Aye, it's really chilly out there, no. Where are the rest of your people? Well, they're still working on the house. I've been into town, you know, sorting a bit of business out late. We have other guests staying, so I hope tonight there won't be quite so much noise. 
Didn't realize you were being all that noisy. That crude fellow. Oz. The one with the broken tooth. I don't know what his name is. Nice no, Carl Oz. Well, he was somewhat boisterous. Oh, come on, I don't think seeing along with a jukebox is particularly boisterous. Well, tell him if he doesn't approve the records not to kick it in with his hot nail boots. Can I have a Lord Scotch, please? Oh, excuse me. Captain Warmth. <laughs> but your famous northern hospitality, is it? Don't include me. I'm from the northeast. This is the south, as far as I'm concerned. And what is it you're doing here, then? Building job. We're uh, converting an old house around the corner. It'd be a place called uh, Thornley Manor, would it? What if it is? Well, if you've got a team of lads on it, presumably it's just change hands. Maybe. I'm just a building contractor, mate. Still, you must know who's paying your wages. Do you mind uh, telling me why you ask me all these questions? Get around with him, Ray Dennis. I'm chilling. Detective Inspector Morris. This is my colleague, Sergeant Lawrence. Yes. Hello, Ali. Yeah. Oh, hang on a minute, will you? Look, Dennis, they're about to call my flight. If you're phoning me because they've found Woodworm and the Joyce, then I'll be less than happy. It's nothing so trivial. It's the law. Oh, what is it? The big lunatic with a broken tooth? Who's he chin this time? Look, shut up a minute, will you, man? Look, it's the plain clothes from the Met. They're asking questions about you and the deal on the house. Yeah, what do you tell them? Oh, come on, man. I've known you long enough to know how to fend off questions. I've told them no. I just thought I should let you know, that's all. Right. Here's what you do. You ring Hallwood, you put him in the picture. This is his department. Then you get your team up at the crack of dawn, you get them down that hose. You do as much damage as you can, right? Look, we're in construction, not demolition. Ah, you need a wee bit of one <laughs> before you can start on the other. And if they're after evaluation, it'll all help to muddy the waters. So you're still going away? Are you kidding? Spain seems more attractive than ever, my friend. Shut the door, will you? What's going on? Shut the door. Shut the door. About Moxie, is it? Moxie? Why would it be about Moxie? Doesn't matter what it's about, man. What's happening? Just keep your voice, man. John, will you? For like? Because there's a pair of coppers just down the hall. Those walls are so thin if you fart, they'll faint, man. Yeah, well, I can vouch for that from last night. <laughs> Wasn't me. Look, it's got nothing to do with us. Just a few complications have turned up, that's all. Oh, aye, wait, you work for somebody like Ali Fraser, you expect complications, don't you? I know what's going on here. He's done a backdoor deal where he's bought that house for way below its market value. There's a word for that, Dennis. Fraud. You don't have to work for him, Neville. If you don't like his money, you can piss off back the door queue. Tetye, Dennis. I just want to know where we stand. Same as we did an hour ago. Business as usual. But if those two coppers come round here, sniffing round, asking questions, I'll handle it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what it is? This place is about as cosy as my local in the Falklands was. <laughs> Never, kettle. Come on, Moxie, man. Why are you in there? We're getting in this early. We might as well not go to bed. Is it safe? Nah, the place is surrounded by the SPG with riot shields. Hey, you're dipping off flat to yourself, you do, man. I mean, you're not exactly public enemy number one, is you? We were cops, we're big. Plain coast from the smoke. Don't come round looking for tow rags like you, son. Oh, hello, Ben. Morning, Papillon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being an egg sandwich here for you. Oh, cheers, mate. Oh, by the way, it was Brad Dexter. What was? But a bloke we couldn't think of in the Magnificent Seven, Bomber's character. It was Brad Dexter. Never heard of him. Oh, no one has. That's why we couldn't remember him. I couldn't sleep last night, see? What, we worrying about the law and the cold and the rats? And I couldn't rats. sleep either, worrying about you and your situation. What I'm going to do about it, Moxie? Yeah, I'm sorry, Dan. I should have level with you. I think he's right. Eh? I think it was Brad Dexter. Ah, now that's who he was, man. He was a gadgy what saved Frank Sinatra's life, wasn't he? That's Remember? right, yeah. Uh, when was that, then? I don't know, well, I'm not a memory, man, am I? But, uh, 
Apparently what happened was Sonata got a duck in one time and he drowned it and that Dexter Gadget dived in and pulled him out, saved him. So that would have been it, wouldn't it? In clove up with the rest of his natch. Oh, just imagine it there. Eh? Limos, boilers, monogram cufflinks with the initials on. How he fancy that, imagine. Yeah, if I can drag you lot back to the real world, I'd like to make a start here. Start on what? Anything that still stands, sticking up or intact, flatten it. Oh, Moxie, man, pull yourself together. Another after you, man. Don't start asking questions. I'll handle it, all right? It's no good for my ticket, all of this, you know. It's my third heart attack in 48 hours. Oh, if anybody ends up in intensive care, it'll be me. Right from edge, yeah. Well, it's only surprising. <laughs> have been put on the open market, I would have suggested an asking price of 180 to 190,000. According to Mr. Ames' solicitors, it's just been sold for 110. Really? That does sound rather dubious. However, considering Mr. Ames's reputation, I'm not altogether surprised. That's why we're here, Mr. Punchup. Well, that's your province, not mine, of course. I met him once when he was trying to buy a pony for his daughter. I couldn't put my finger on it. But I felt something didn't quite ring true about the chap. There's a pity you didn't tell us at the time. Pity you people let him slip through the net. Stand there if I was you. Wait a minute, sir. Perhaps one hundred and eighty thousand is on the high side. Is it far? What? Newcastle. Bloody miles. What's it like? Do you think of yourself as working class, Barry? <laughs> what I should do? Tower blocking Leightonstone. Dad's a caretaker. Yeah, I'm solid working class. Well, you've spent the night in Newcastle. You realise you're middle class. <laughs> hey, I'm a real Right yeah. <laughs> hey, hurry up, Wayne, will you? There's a bloody queue out here, you know. Why do these places always just have one bog? Mm -hmm. Hey, I've just been saying to Mox, he'd be all right with us, won't he? I mean, he's our mate, we're going to look after him. Oh, that's all very well for you to see it. Technically, I'm the employer. What? That says a lot about where your mentality is, you know, then. What's that supposed to mean? But what do you think I mean? I don't know. You tell me what my mentality is. Well, in a, in a word, you see yourself as a gabber, don't you? You always have done. That's an old sentence. Hey, man, I'm seeing this for your benefit, you know, toss but. Yeah, all right. Shut up, both of you. Look, I've got to handle this job legit, right? Yeah, but Ali's a crafty old bugger himself. Well, that's all the more reason, isn't it, why he doesn't want to bring any heat down? 
by some petty infringement of the Employment Act. Look, I have to do your 715, stamp their ticket. Moxie's got neither. Look, Moxie, if you're picked up, which, God forbid, they're gonna ask me, you know, quite rightly why I hired you, without proper documentation. So when you talk about accessories, won't be you lot, will it? Oh, no. Be yours truly who ends up in the clots. See what I mean about the gaffer's mentality? Yeah, but he's right, though, isn't he? Can't compromise him. It wouldn't be fair. Oh, all right, all right. Well, does it not strike you lot as a bit ironic how this set up? What? Yeah. Well, here we are, right? We're working for this bloke whose reputation is, to say the least, dubious. I mean, I know about about Ali Fraser, you know. He's a heavy duty villain. But he's out, right? He's out, right? Because he's so bloody wrapped up by lawyers, the Coontons, and legal loopholes. He couldn't give a monkey's job about the law, the inland revenue, and an out. And you're more worried about Moxie, who, I mean, you know, with all due respect, is just some low-life punter. Whose only real fault is he gets through life thinking every day of the year's guy Fox need. Hogs free, Moxie. When was the survey done? When my client first became interested in the property. The date's on there, I think. Did the surveyor ever actually visit the house? What are you suggesting? Oh, come on, it's been doctored. Christ, the ink's still wet. But we know this old deal stinks, and so do you. And you've even got a bunch of cowboys down there knocking 20 grand off the value as we speak. They're renovating the property. We were bleeding demolishing it when we left. Even if they rip up every floorboard and discover termites in the ballroom, you and I know that that house has been marked down well below the odds. And your friend Mr. Fraser is going to take a bundle of cash in a duty-free bag to Spain to make up the balance. If he hasn't already. You chaps have come an awful long way to voice these speculations. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yeah. Where do we eat in Newcastle? I'm afraid. Are you the foreman? Me? No, I'm just one of the guys who does the graft. I, I'm so sorry. Uh, Dennis is a uh, gaffer, ma'am. Aye. Well, I do rather need a word with him. Right, he soon has said indeed. Dennis! Some problem, is there? Uh, yes, I'm afraid there is. Oh, what's happened over the locals got a petition up to get rid of us undesirables? No, not exactly. Hey, what's going on? Nobody said nothing about stopping work, you know. I'm afraid you'll all have to stop work. What do you mean? Well, as I suspected, this is a listed building. Grade two. I called the council and they confirmed it. Well, that means that nothing can be changed without prior planning permission. Look, I'm sorry, but until I hear that from my boss, my life just keep on working. I'm afraid Mrs. Bellamy is right. If you don't stop now, you can have a court order from council within the hour. I don't believe this, with me. There's nothing personal in this, you understand. And I do realise that it's not your fault. But I'm sure you'll agree that in this day and age, we must do everything we can to keep the heritage of England intact. I was brought up on a council estate in the northeast of England, Pet, Mrs. Bellamy. I've seen precious little of the glorious heritage of England. Right. Same again, is it? Aye, oh, why not? I need graft tomorrow. I might as well work on my hangovers tonight. Get me a whiskey and pepper as well. We are terrible indigestion with our bloody curry. Hey, I don't believe this. You know, there's only one toilet upstairs. Three of you have to have Vindaloo. Oh. <laughs> Same again, please, Squire. And uh, a whiskey and pepper. Do you mind not calling me Squire? 
or chief or boy or mate or any other title you people have bestowed on me. Gotta call you something. <laughs> then why not try Arthur? That is my given name. As you wish, Arthur. I say, Arthur, do you think I could have a little brandy on the side, please, Arthur? I think I've got a cold coming on, Arthur. Evening, H. Oh, oh buddy! Hey, uh, well, good mate. Just drive up, did you, son? Yeah, uh, Cliff and H are bracking me van and all. Oh, you better wish not, eh? I'm not having a penis galore, don't you, that much? Bears on all of it. Not rolling here, you nut. Better make that another whiskey and pep, Arthur. Is he another one? Last of the Magnificent Seven, this. Barry Taylor, meet Mr. Arthur Pringle, your genial host. Good evening, Squire. I've only got a single room and it's 15 pounds cash. Whatever. I have the way with all. Buddy, take any notice of miserable Mickman. He's have a seat with the lads. Yeah, my seat. I think might be in the lose on the move. Oh, oh too, no. It certainly moves fast, that pudding, doesn't it? I don't know why we didn't just buy it and sling it straight down the bog. What could cut the middle man out then? <laughs> There's neat food here, I'm afraid, Barry. Ah, oh, I'm not interested in food, never. No. I haven't eaten a proper meal for three days, actually. Oh, dear, oh. I. Here's a lizard. I thought you'd never ask. So your presence here indicates the conciliatory talks are broken down, I assume. Pro tem, Wayne, yes. She needs to think things through, like. She needs her own space, as it were. Yes. I'm sure it'll all work out, son. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sure it will, yeah. Yeah, but, um... In the meantime, I thought just, you know, best get away, like. Oh. What have you done about the business? Couldn't face it, Nev, no. Let it slip, anyhow, recently, what with the house and stuff, no. No, no. Wolverhampton's just too painful a place for me to be at this point in time. Too painful a place for me at the best of times. Mm -hmm. I know, I mean, it's got too many memories, no. I thought, oh. best get away with me mates, get me head stuck into some honest craft. Oh. Oh, yeah. Aye, well, yeah. Uh... If you were thinking about easing the pain by throwing yourself into work, bit of a hiccup there, I'm afraid, boy. Right, just a little one, bit. What do you mean, hiccup? Well, uh... Well, look, we got a couple of problems there, Barry. <laughs> the bloke we're working for, he's got the fraud squad breathing down his neck, which doesn't install confidence. We've had the down tools on the old house, because they've slapped a preservation order on it. And apparently, Mox is on the run from the nick. So we're harbouring a fugitive from justice. Apart from that, everything else is triff. <laughs> so I never have got myself into. Ah, oh, the moxie business isn't such a problem, not now we're not working. No, me graft, me ticket, me bother, eh, Dan? Uh, well, there's no moxie problem. Uh, what do you mean? Well, he's buggered off again. His bed's not being slept in and his tools are all gone. Oh, aye, Dirty. aye. What was it he said last night, eh? Can't he compromise you, Dennis, wasn't it? Well, he hasn't, has he? Pissed up to keep you in the clear. Ah, knock it off, Oz. What? Then didn't drive him away, did he? Trying to see how did he? Yeah, Nobody bit... did. He just didn't want him to kid any of us. You've got to respect him for that. Look, maybe he's gone back to turn himself in, eh? Didn't well, keep you out. Well, you will you? Look, I know one thing. I just hope he doesn't get collared on his way back of the neck. Because they'll not believe he was on his way back. <sighs> Poor old Mox. <sighs> All alone in the noise. Well, it's bitter out, you know. Wonder where he is now, eh? <laughs> probably sleeping rough. Ah, uh, he's probably curled up in some bloody ditch. Scared stiff. Bloody frozen stiff. I think it's terrible. Still, oh, as he's gone, I might as well have his bed. There's no point in paying extra for a single room.